we're going to have a look at how to take essentially unmixed drums and to mix them into shape as it was using what's known as a top-down mixing approach. We're going to use quite a bit of parallel processing like distortion and uh, compression, but of course also some levels and EQs. We're going to do this in sections so we can see what's happened in between each example. So in this first section, we're just going to have a quick look at the levels and a little bit of the parallel distortion that I'm using on one of the microphones. So this is what it sounds like now. So I'm going to get rid of the floor tom and the rack tom because I don't need that in this section. I'm also going to turn down the hi-hats quite a bit and also check the kick drums a little bit. Yes, I'm Double tapping there, we need to do something about uh, later on. So there we go, kick in and kick out, that's fine. Uh, let's turn down the overheads and let's turn on the ribbons. And I'm also gonna pan them left and right, fully left and right. And for now, I'm just gonna quickly mute the corridor and the room mics here. There we go, a little bit of uh, overheads just gets the stereo image to become a little bit wider. And then we can add a little bit of the ribbons. Like that. Uh, in this case, I'm not going to use the room microphone here. I said I'm going to use this corridor microphone. And I'm going to add some sound sample that. So let's make that active. And I want this to provide quite a bit of low end to the drums. So I've uh, boosted the low end. And in this case, also pull up the crunch a bit. Uh, this obviously depends a little bit on what type of distortion uh, plugin that you're using to do this. So let's blend that in. I've also added uh, two EQs for the overhead just to brighten them up a little bit. Okay, over to the next section. Okay, so in this section, we're gonna have a look at what happens between example two and example three. So there's a few things going on here. I've submixed the kick drums, I've added gates to them. Uh, I've also added a VCA so I can control the entire drum group, uh, but also so I can then within this VCA group control the overheads separately without affecting the whole group. There are other videos on my channel that covers submixing in Pro Tools, so I'm going to skip that for now, but we'll have a quick look at the gate. I've set the ratio to the highest because I want the gate to work as a gate and not an expander. The range, which is also sometimes referred to as depth, is set to a minus 80, so the gate is fully closed, uh, so it doesn't let through any other bleed. The attack, release, and hold settings are set in this case to, to uh, work with the snare drum. So if I now turn up the threshold, we can hopefully get rid of the bleed. And obviously the snare drum sounds quite short when we got the gate on like this, but if we then blend in the overheads, then it should sound a lot more natural. So in this uh, section, we'll cover what happens between example three and example four. And a quick short recap, here's sec example three. And this is example four. So the main thing that's happened between uh, example three and example four is that I've added some parallel compression. So if I mute the rest of the drums, then the parallel compression sounds like this. And I'm using the very excellent Clang Helms MJUC Junior. Uh, there's also a big brother of this one. Uh, looks like this. Has some more functionality and some more settings. And there are only three time settings, fast, slow, and auto. And in this case, because I want to have a lot of compression, I've set it to fast and it sounds like this between the two. 
So essentially it's the attack time that is changing. I'm adding a lot of compression. So we can use this parallel to beef up the rest of the drums. I've also then also uh, compensated the level loss with the makeup gain. If we then blend this in with the rest of the drums. And as we're using it as a parallel, it's very easy to change the relationship between the faders and get the sound that we're looking for. The change between example four and example five is quite subtle. But I've had some processes that can quite dramatically change the sound. And one of them is the parallel distortion here, uh, which is now mainly affecting the snare drum. But of course I could add more of the overheads if I want to or any other instrument. In the mix, it essentially just gives a little bit of boost to the snare drum. To this parallel distortion, I've also added an EQ uh, with a low cut and a high cut filter. So it ends up being a band pass, so I can further shape the sound uh, as I'm as I'm working with the mix, and in this case, I probably don't want too much high end or too much low end anyway. I've also added bus compressor for the entire drum track. In this case, I'm using the Tokyo Dawn's Kotelnikov, and it isn't doing that much, but it can certainly help with drum fills and such and like that. And I could also, if I wanted to, uh, affect it a lot more. This is what it sounds like right now. <laughs> So obviously not doing much, but of course, if I change the settings somewhat. We can have some quite dramatic changes happening. In between example five and six, there is only a subtle change. And what I've added here is simply some parallel compression on the Coles Corridor microphone. In between examples six and seven, there's a bit more change. And what we added here is an additional uh, distortion here with quite a lot of high end to it. So almost no low end. And this can be very useful in a mix, just essentially to make the drums kind of cut through the mix a bit more. In this case, I've used them on the snare drum and the overheads again, just because that worked really well for this mix. Okay, that's it. Thank you.